you can see on the bottom of the screen there, that's how you spell Craftex. Capital K, um, Craft, and then dash T E X. So if you are searching for it on Amazon, that's how you would spell it. Um, I have a whole tub of it here for us to look through. Um, and you're just going to have to kind of not take my word for it, but I'm just going to have to kind of touch and feel it and try and explain in words how it feels and what it does. So it, the, um, the people who make it are called C&T Publishing. So they're actually people who make um, mostly books, like uh, instructional books about sewing and different crafts. Um, they also make like tap transfer paper and they make this product called Craftex. So they don't tell you exactly what it's made of, because I'm guessing that's proprietary, but it is a paper, but it handles like um, fabric. And specifically, it's a really good option for bookmaking because it is, um, it's a thinner alternative to leather. So if you are looking for sort of a cruelty free or a vegan, or you just don't want to use leather, you don't have leather, you know, whatever, for whatever reason you don't, don't use leather. Craftex is a really good um, substitute and I use it a heck of a lot. Um, let me just run through the basics of the material itself and then um, I will show you. So what I did last night was I literally went into my closet which is, uh, see that closet over there? It's filled with like stuff, like half the stuff I didn't even know I had. Let's not tell Andy, um, you know, like paints and inks and like you name it. Apparently I have it. Um, I found my Copic markers from like 10 years ago. They still work. So I literally took out every art supply I had and um, did stacks and stacks of samples um, to see what works well on Craftex and what doesn't. So um, I'm going to run through some basics of property of the material. Then I will um, demo for you on the camera just some different ways you can decorate it. But honestly, like the world is your oyster when it comes to decorating. And I know many of you um, who are on the live today have experience of decorating it. And I'm hoping um, in a few, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, you'll be able to share in the comments the ways that you decorate it. But hold off right now so that um, I can read those and pull them up on screen so that we could come up with a lot. We could sort of brainstorm lots of different ways. So Craftex, as I said, is made by CNT Publishing. You can buy it directly from their website. And I did include a link underneath um, where to buy it. So it's C and T Publishing. But you can also get it on Amazon. Let me just see if I have CNT Publishing. Let me just, you can't copy this link, but you'll see it says ctpub.com. And then if you go there, you will find it. Um, but you can also get it on Amazon. So if you don't live in the US, um, it's probably better to go to your, you know, Amazon in the country that you live in. Um, and also some craft stores sell it too. Um, I've just never seen it in my local craft store. There are two types of craft text. There's a washed, like a pre-washed. You see this? It's got wrinkles in it. Pre-washed and dyed, hand dyed, pre-washed as wrinkles. And then there's a smooth version, which is um, unwashed. So I have both. I only have the unwashed in this craft. Um, it comes in the hand, this hand dyed pre washed comes in 13 colors and they are bright colors. So they are things like this yellow, this, um, let's go through that, this orchid color, this green. Um, honestly, I have a ton. This orange, um, this kind of greeny teal color, um, bright red like bright red. Um, you can also get five vintage or more neutral colors. So they are black chocolate natural, which is this one, stone, which is really nice and white. And they come in pre-washed and unwashed. So wrinkly and smooth. And it's my understanding that these colors here, I've only ever seen them in the pre-washed. I've never seen 
a smooth version of the colored ones. But if I get that wrong, please correct me. So the upshot is lots of colors, lots of bright colors, uh, five neutral colors. Uh, and these neutral colors are particularly useful if you want to do surface design on them. Um, and um, yes, so pre-washed and unwashed, bright colors and some neutral colors. So there's something for sort of everyone's taste, really, is, is kind of what I'm trying to say. So the important properties to keep in mind about Craftex is that it does have a grain. So if you take away nothing else from today, I want you to, um, I'm just gonna put up the other little banner. I want you to remember that it has a grain and um, I'm going to, so it's harder to tell on the pre-washed which way the grain goes. It's um, it's like paper, you feel it. So say I have this piece of red, I'm feeling it like there's more resistance when I bend this way. When I bend this way, it bends a lot more easily. But it's a little harder to tell on the pre-washed just because the fibers have been wetted and then dried, so they're a little more flexible. Um, so, but there definitely is a grain. So if you're making a handmade book and this is your book cover, you want to make sure that your grain is running parallel to the spine. I think if you made a mistake with this um, pre-washed wrinkly one, um, I don't think it would be the end of the world. However, if you made a mistake with this one, um, I know from personal experience, because I did it, um, if you go against the grain, if your spine it goes against the grain, you're gonna have, the book will never lie flat. Um, so with the unwashed versions, um, oh my goodness, you can really tell, like, see, this is going against the grain. Can you see? You can see how it's cracking that is against the grain. You can literally just see, I haven't even folded it and you can see that it's cracking. And then when I go this way, see there's no cracking. It folds really beautifully. So it's a lot easier to tell when you are using the smooth unwashed, which is the grain. And let me just, um, let me grab a piece here. This is just a tiny piece. If I fold against the grain here, you can see, perhaps you can't see actually. So you can see how sort of cracked it is right here. But then when I fold with the grain, it folds really nicely. It folds easily. You probably can't see that very well. Um, it's very easy to tell on here when I'm going against the grain. You can kind of see how it's cracking. So that is, you know, if you if you could, if you want to leave now, go ahead because you really that's the main thing you need to know. Um, on the unwashed version, there is a front and a back. So one side is smooth, the other side has a little bit of texture. You won't be able to see that um, on the camera. Um, I don't think it matters which side you use, but if you're painting on it or do some kind of surface design, I bet you get a slightly different effect. With the um, wrinkly pre-washed version, I personally, I'm sure there, there is a front and a back, but I can't see it. I don't see the difference. Um, so you can buy this in rolls. So if you find a color or a project you have, you can buy a roll um, and the rolls are like, um, I'm just gonna read this out, 18 and a half inches wide. So think of your 16 inch ruler and a bit more, 18 and a half inches wide, and then it's um, 28 and a half inches long. So that's um, however many yards that is. You do the math, two and a half yards or something. So it's, um, is that right? Yeah. So um, you can get rolls. Uh, but you could, if you're just starting out, I would grab a pack and you can get um, packs of either five or six sheets um, and they are in eight and a half by 11s. Um, one time I did see nine by 12s, but re I could only find eight and a half by 11s when I looked on Amazon and c &T Publishing yesterday. Um, so Arlene asks a good question. You can wet down the unwashed and wrinkle it. Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can. Um, definitely you can. Um, ways to cut or, so ways to um, cut this paper. I'm just going to try and find a scrap. Here's a scrap here. What you cannot do is tear it. Look, it doesn't tear. Try as you might, it's never gonna tear. So ways to cut this paper are kind of how you would cut fabric with um, a pair of scissors, like this. Um, 
I like to use a rotary cutter and my quilting ruler and treat it like fabric. Um, a sharp knife. I don't actually know if a, this kind of paper cutter will work. Let me just check. I haven't tried this. Let's see. This is a fresh blade. Oh, yeah. Works like a dra uh, dream. So, you know, your regular Fisker's paper cutter, it cuts beautifully on one of these. We'll just do it again to make sure I wasn't making it up. Actually, well, hold on. Yeah, if you do um, two passes of the blade, then um, you can even use your little paper cutter like this. So a sharp knife, you don't need a huge um, utility knife, you just need a regular knife, throw these away. Um, a rotary cutter, scissors, um, or your regular Fiskars paper cutter, um, but it doesn't hand tear. So that is one of the beauties of Craftex, it doesn't hand tear. Now I had a question from someone and said, they don't understand how it doesn't deteriorate in water. I don't either, because I'm not like a chemist, but I'm just going to grab some. What I'm going to do is I have a um, mug of the yogurt pot of water. I'm actually going to put a piece in here for 10 minutes and you can just, we'll leave this in here for 10 minutes and we'll see what it looks like when we're done. Just to show, prove to you that it does not deteriorate in water. Um, but I'm guessing that's what it's made, you know, the material that it's made of is doing that. I just don't know what that is. Um, let me just check my other um, notes. Often when you buy a pack of the Craftex, it is um, in the sheets, it's not square. So I have found that um, when I buy packs, you know, the edges are, um, I, I'm guessing it's probably because it's been pre-shrunk. Um, the edges are not square. So you really do need to keep that in mind when you um, buy a pack of the flat paper. You're going to want to square up the corners um, before you start a project, and unless you want a wrinkly edge. Um, another thing to note about this, it's color fast. So this, um, oh, where are we here? This sort of um, piece of green Craftex in here will not leach water. So it's actually color fast too. Um, obviously, if you put something on here that's not color fast, it will run. But this dye in here is color fast. Um, let me just double check. I have everything. It has a grain. It has a front and a back. I've run through the different kinds. You get rolled or flat. Um, I've showed you how to cut it with scissors, rotary cutter knife. Um, one useful thing um, when you are creating. Um, books which is really what I use it for um, it scores really well so let me just quickly flip the camera down and I will show you the scoring I'm sure most of you know how to score but just to um just to mix things up let me turn on the other light there we go so say I have a cover actually let's use um the red so it shows up a little bit more so the one thing I'll say for scoring is that you need something quite um, sharp. So this bone folder here probably is not going to work. Just um, this bone folder here is too wide at the end. That's like an eighth of an inch. That's too wide to create a score mark. So I really like to use um, this old butter knife to score. But you, if you had a... Um, bone folder with a much sharper tip, or you'd got one that you made yourself that you sort of filed, um, you could do that. So if you were going to create a book like this, um, with a sort of spine with stitching on, you would, you would score on the front. So let's just say, um, you know, this is the back, this is my back side, this is my front side, it's got some kind of pattern on, you're gonna score on the front. So just um, grab the back of a knife like this and score. You can see it scores really nicely. Let's just score again. And then you've got to fold it along those score lines and bone fold. And you do need to put quite a lot of pressure, but remember this is the front of the book. So that it scores nicely and gives you a decent spine. Can find the score. There we go. 
So that is just simple scoring. I'm going to give you a nice, clean spine like that for your book. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Let's talk about, while I've got the um, camera down, why don't we talk about ways to attach things to your book? Um, first of all, there's uh, sewing, just straight sewing. Um, I really like to um, do machine sewing. Unfortunately, I don't have... Um, I do not have many samples with me. I've actually only got one because they're all in my studio, which is in Lowell, which is a hot spot right now for COVID cases. So I'm not going in. So all my samples are in my studio. Oh, excellent. The light just went out. Um, I really like to machine stitch on here. Um, and, and clearly I like to do hand stitching because I make handmade books with them. So one way to attach things to your craft text um, is by stitching, either by hand or by machine. And I'll show you um, in, a, in a minute, actually, um, how to get nice even stitches on here. Let me look at your questions. So, yes, Diane, you can definitely eco print. Diane says she's eco printed. Retta says, can you dye it? Yes, you can. Absolutely, you can dye it. Um, where are we? Here's a good question from Lucy. If buying some for the first time, you get the washed. Um, I would. Why? Yeah. I mean, it's up to you, Lucy. But yes, I would. I would perhaps. I started out with the unwashed um, kind, and I really. And then I washed it, and I think I soaked it in tea um, as well, and, and did various things to it. So yeah, I would perhaps start out with the unwashed, unless you're really looking for a very bright colour. Um, what other questions are there? Let me see. Victoria says, can you emboss it? Yes, you can. You can run it through your big shot. If you've got one of those um, sort of embossing folders and then one of those die cutting machines, you can run it through um, an embossing folder. You can also run it through your die cutting machine and create different shaped dies. Great questions. Hello, Todd from Lowell. Be careful. Lots of cases there. Uh, Here's a good question from Kim. Would it make sense? Let me turn the camera off for a second. Kim says, would it make sense to, sorry, I don't want you just to, would it make sense um, if you sell, if they sell on the roll that it's rolled with the grain, but it's not. I have bought Craftex rolled and the grain has not been going with the roll. Some have, some haven't. And I contacted them and they said they can't guarantee which way it is. So um, are the questions? Yep, Terry says she's used it in Boston folder. Fran asks, can you jelly print? Yes, you can. You absolutely can jelly print on it. Yep. Honestly, um, oh, here's a question from Amy. Honestly, you literally can do anything with this stuff within reason. Um, Amy says, would you share the link for that exact size metal triangle? She loves it. So this is the nine inch metal triangle. It's from Colophon Book Arts. Um, I will, at the end, try to find a link if Mickey can't find a link. If Mickey's here, maybe Mickey could find it. It's a Colophon Book Arts and it's the nine inch aluminum triangle. And I love it. Okay. Um, let's see. Joanne says, I wonder if Akua inks that normally absorb into paper would absorb into craft text. That's a good question. I bought the wrong Akua inks the other day, so I couldn't test those. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good question. I don't know, Joanne. So if someone knows, let us know, or um, you're gonna have to experiment and tell us, Joanne. Kathy said, yes, it does. Um, good question. Does the grain run with the finished edge? Um, I don't No, I'm not sure if it does, Mary. I would have to, I don't have a roll here to check. Obviously, when you get the sheets, you don't know what the finished edge is. But no, I, I don't think you can tell what the finished edge is. So thank you, Todd. Todd included a link to Colophon Book Arts. He's so good. Thank you, Todd. All right. Um, I want to quickly show you my experiments with glue last night. Because I know, I know you're just dying to see me, what I did for glue, right? Um, 
let me see uh where are we glue i got all these samples here oh here we go so um my experiment showed me i experimented with matte medium i experimented with soft gel and i also experimented with pva now you'll just have to trust me that this is not gelato but it's pva um what i found was that and I'm not going to show you on the screen because you don't really need to need to sh you don't really need to see me um, gluing. What I found was on the pre-washed, the wrinkly kind, the matte medium doesn't work so well. It lifts a little bit. However, I found the PVA left it a little bit wrinkly. There's quite a lot of moisture in that PVA, so the PVA worked brilliantly. This is stuck down and will never come off. Um, but it it did leave it a little bit more wavy. Um, and I found that the matte medium was not quite as secure as I would like. However, um, what I did find was on the unwashed flat, PVA worked fabulously and matte medium worked fabulously. So... Um, I think it's the wrinkles in the pre-washed that somehow the matte medium doesn't go in, doesn't adhere to quite as well. But on the unwashed flat matte medium worked great. Um, and then gel medium worked well on both. So I think I put gel medium on the back one of these. So gel medium also worked really well. Um, my thoughts are that my um, matte medium is quite runny. Let me just show you this, it's this Utrecht. And it's quite runny so if you have a thicker matte medium that might be okay um, and my gel medium is super thick i can't even own it actually my gel medium is like super thick so that's something to keep in mind that if you're using matte medium you um it's only really going to work on the flat um and um pva works really well on both and gel medium works really well on both um, I also did a little experiment with washi tape and it adhered really well. Like this is not coming loose. I rubbed it with my um, bone folder and washi tape stays on there really well. Who knew? So um, that is another option to get rid of these. So in addition to sewing, you can glue things on there. I did some matte medium just on here to see what it's like. Um, and it does give a really nice... Um, feel to it so if you wanted to cover up some artwork so you put a piece of collage on here i know you can't see this but if you then covered it with matte medium and some got on the craft text it actually gives a nice um sort of smooth uh surface to it so you could definitely put matte medium directly onto the craft text if you wanted to protect some artwork on there so let me check on your questions and then um, i will get into showing you some ways to decorate this craft text and then um, next week, I will show you a book. Um, let me see what your questions are. Hopefully, you don't mind if I drink my coffee while I, while I look at your questions. Let's have a look. Let's see your questions. Um, Kathy says, is that paper? Yes, it was just straight paper. So I glued on here just straight paper. Let me turn off the light. I glued on here um, just um, a regular weight decorative paper um i didn't glue on fabric i'm not sure how well that would work with um those mediums you would have to experiment thank you mickey for doing that i wonder too so kathy says she wonders if pva would work better with fabric it might do louise says have you tried yes paste oh i didn't try yes and i have some yes paste i just bought some so that's your Louise, Jennifer Louise. That's your that's your mission is to try yes paste. I've not tried yes paste on it. Good. Can you embroider? Yes, you can embroider. And I'll show you in a minute a way to um get nice neat um holes when you embroider on it. Just I've got so many bits and pieces on here. Thank you, Magritte. But yes, definitely you can embroider on it. All right, so we've talked about um its properties, talk about where to get it, how it comes, 
how to cut, how to score, um, squaring up, how to attach things to it. Let me actually, now is a good time to show you how to sew on it. You would just use a regular sewing machine. Um, but let me give you a little tip on how to uh, sew. If you're doing hand sewing, so hold on, I'm just flipping my camera down. Um, I really like if I'm um, if I'm sewing on my on a spine like this, or I'm doing just decorative sewing. I um, so honestly, I don't even have this, but this is how I first got introduced to craft text was because um, cloth paper scissors sent me um, asked me to do an article on it and make a book. This was like three years ago, um, and this is the book I made for them and. Um, this is how I did this piece. I did eco printing on a separate piece of paper and hand sewed it on the front. And um, the way I did that was to put a piece of graph paper or grid paper, just a piece of um, foam. So, you know, like kids' foam that you can use. I lay down my craft text. Let's get a fresh piece. I've got so many strips and then I put um, my grid paper on the top, lined it up and then used my um, awl. And then this way, if you're doing um, stitching or embroidery, your stitches are spaced evenly. Because, you know, I might have a nervous breakdown if the stitches weren't placed evenly. And if you wanted the stitches closer together, um, you could eyeball the center here and do smaller ones or get a finer grid paper. Um, you can also buy these guides, I think, from the craft store with um, smaller, with the holes spaced closer together. But um, I just like using this grid paper and then you would just sew it like anything else. So then just, you know, do a running stitch or any kind of decorative stitch that you wanted. Um, so, and I, I like still like to use wax linen thread just because it, it pulls through nicely, but you could use any thread too. So if you want nice, even stitching, um, the grid paper is your buddy. So, and you know, this is just a plain boring stitch. Imagine the kind of um, beading that you could do with this or um, embroidery. There's like a million things that you could do. Let's talk about decorating our craft text. Let's get into some fun stuff now. I'm going to check your comments and then we'll get into some fun painting. Um, thank you, Joanne. You're welcome. Uh, so Lana says she recognizes that book from Cloth Paper Scissors um, because I made a second one and um, I gave it away in like a contest and Lana won it. I remember that. Question from Diane. How long are the rolls? The rolls are 28 and a half inches long and 18 and a half inches wide. Good question, Diane. Kathy says you can iron it. Yes, says Amelia. Retta says, how about glue sticks? I'm, I imagine if it's something thin like tissue or a napkin, a glue stick might work. Um, I would think if it was something heavier, probably not. I would say it would depend on the weight of what um, you're attaching. Um, I'd tell you something I didn't try was um, fusible webbing. But that would work because it takes heat. So one thing I didn't try at 11 o'clock last night, which I should have done. Well, no, I shouldn't have done. Um, let's see what else. I miss cloth, paper, scissors too. It's too bad. Um, leather tools can do this too. Yes, that's a good point, Janet. Thank you. So um, you know the kind of leather tools that create several punches at a time? I think you can roll them or those ones where there's... Um, they're almost, they look like a big fork with holes in and they're spaced at different, um, they're all spaced differently. You could use a leather tool too for this. Just remember, it doesn't need a lot of um, pressure to punch these holes. So don't, so make sure you protect your work surface because it's really easy to, um, you know, just literally just push through with it all. This is also um, useful for people whose wrists are uh, kind of compromised. If you don't want to use like the Japanese screw punt on leather, which frankly can be really hard on the hands and wrists, this craft text is a really good um, option. Okay. Uh, 
let's see another question so I don't know the answer to this Kim but someone might for anyone who has done embroidery for the cover did you leave the other side exposed or did you cover it up with the not so pretty stitches I would imagine you could just glue a piece of paper on the back um, or book cloth to cover it up but I've never done it so if anyone would like to um, answer that that'd be great Nan says she used fusible webbing yesterday on preached and it worked great yay excellent pre-washed <laughs> pre <-wa> <laughs> so yes fusible webbing works great um luen says can you tell us what the punching tool is called um i don't know exactly what it's called but janet i'm sure would answer in the comments for you what that leather punching tool is called oh japanese screw punch maybe that's what you'd mean if it's the one that um Janet was talking about maybe Janet could pop it in there, but the other one is a Japanese screw punch. All right, folks, let's get to um, let's get to some fun. Let's get messy. Um, here are my experiments. Let's do um, let's do this experiment first. Um, I'm actually going to do some now. I'm going to get out my silicon mat. This, this, this mat is so well loved. So. I was surprised that watercolors work really well on craft text. Who knew? So um, let me show you a couple different types that I used. And um, gosh, hmm. There's so much stuff in this house. Can anyone relate to that? Does anyone here like overwhelmed with supplies? Uh, where is the? I just, well, here's these. Okay, here's. It's a tube of watercolors. I have liquid watercolors, and somewhere I should have a pan of watercolors. But apparently, that's I don't see those right now. So I guess we'll not work with the pan watercolors. Good lord! Oh, here they are. Found the pan watercolors. So I was really surprised that um, a revolving punch, the square plastic one. Yeah, revolving punch maybe. Ah. Oh. Isabella says, which issue was this? Good question. May, June 2018. May, June 2018. If you're interested, though, in um, making this book, I have a free version on my website, actually, um, Isabel. So I can always send you a, um, can always send you a link to that. Let me write down your name. Otherwise, I will forget. Isabel Savvy. Okay, so it was the, um, where are we? I can't see, May, June 2018. It looks like this on the front. So, okay, watercolors. I was very surprised that you could use um, watercolors in this. So let me switch down to show you my experiments. All right, so while we're here, here's my watercolour thingy. Here's the craft text that's been soaking in water. Let's have a look. And it's just fine. So nothing bled. I and mean, this is pink because I was using <laughs> pink watercolours. This may be from last night, I'm just saying. So this is wet. It's still can't tear it. It's strong. So um, you could do so. If you think of anything like dyeing or, or eco printing, this is not, it's not going to damage this. It feels a little stretchy right now because it's wet, I have to say, um, but it's perfectly fine. It's not, um, so you can't rip it or anything. So that's our experiment with wet. Let me just dry my hands. Okay, watercolors. I was surprised that watercolors did so well on this um let's use like this kind of piece of yellow uh, i don't want to waste a whole sheet of it but um let's find some let's find just a little strip like this i want to use a whole kind of book cover size i was surprised at how well watercolors did on um the craft text so i have this tiny travel pan of watercolors i tried using um, some liquid watercolors, which came out really 
strong as you can imagine. So I used a couple drops of that. I also used some fancy Daniel Smith watercolors. I'm just gonna take this off the screen, I beg your pardon. Here we go, oops, take, let's take this off the screen too so you can see, sorry about that. And uh, let's put some Daniel Smith, a tiny bit of Daniel Smith through the tube. Okay, let's get these out of my way. And I was surprised at how well they came out. So this is the liquid watercolor, just neat. And look how rich that is, holy smoke. That is amazing. And obviously the more water I put in there, the um, less vibrant it's gonna be. And this is how it turns out when it's dry. Even dry, look how vibrant that is on the green. Um, so that is pretty amazing. Can you imagine the, the patterns and the drawing that you could do with this? And then here is the Daniel Smith straight from the tube. A little bit of water on my brush. And again, it's thicker and creamier. And that is really nice. Hopefully you can see that. Look how, honestly, that is so vibrant. I'm stunned at how great that is. And then if we just have straight from the, see these mini little pans I've got. Where's my water? Let me just mix them up. I use these uh, for traveling my other palette is huge so let's just moisten those a little bit we might as well just stick with the red theme right so if you um want to use pan watercolors you're going to get a um less vibrant look but even so how nice is that that takes the paint really nicely and you get the transparent watercolor effect. So, and you know, the more water I add, the more. But I can imagine you could add some really fabulous effects on um, the, the white, the, the neutral colors, but even these really bright colors. So let's see how they dried overnight. This is the liquid watercolor that I showed you. This is the, um, oh, hang on. That's another liquid watercolor on the flat. Then this is the pan watercolors. I think that's a really lovely effect. Um, also, you're gonna be surprised to hear that um, pencil works too. So if you want to be a lot more detailed, you can also use watercolor pencil. And that's also gonna give you know, a different effect. So you can definitely use watercolor pencil and that is, um, that is the watercolor pencil dry. So that is watercolors. I can't say enough good things about them and I'm, and I'm extremely surprised at how well they worked out. Um, let's talk about paint because um, you're asking about, I'll clean this up, you're asking about um, jelly printing. So I experimented with acrylic paints last night. I'll just leave this so much dry. And they were fabulous. Um, and so I don't see why you can't jelly print with it. So let's see the different paints that I used. Let's grab some paint. So one thing I found really great about the paints was I decided just to use a plain golden acrylic in teal. Let's find yourself um, something that'll be good. Find myself a scrap to work with. I don't think that's actually going to work very well with the teal, is it? Look at me, I'm trying to colour coordinate a sample. Ridiculous, let's just use this. Um, the plain paint worked out just great. So you could just put it on. There's my brush for acrylics. Here it is. Plain paint worked out great. Um, it can't really see that. Let's try this. This plain paint worked out really well. It's beautiful. Um, you can add a little water to it and you get a more transparent effect. The more, um, this is a solid paint color though, which you can see here, but if you used 
a more transparent paint, you'd get more of a transparent look as well. So there it is with water. The best effect I think that I got last night with my experimenting was this paint with acrylic glazing medium. So if you have any of this and unfortunately, oh, too much. Oh, well, never mind. I generally like to do 50-50. This is acrylic glazing medium. And this goes on really nicely. Look how well that spreads. Um, and it gives you a nice translucent effect. Um, but it's a lot more workable. So, and then when they dry, this is how they look. This is straight paint. This is paint with water. And then this is the glaze with acrylic glaze and medium. So honestly, you can get really fabulous um, effects with acrylic paint. So I don't see why you could not do jelly printing too. One more thing before I answer your questions. Let me just get rid of that because you know that it's going to go everywhere otherwise. One other um, thing about paints is I experimented with Posca paint pens and they were really fabulous. So um, if you happen to have any Posca paint pens, which goodness me, I might. I like the chunkies. But, um, let me just find some bright colors. If you have these Posca paint pens, or any kind of paint pen, they work really well like this. And they dry just great, you can see here. And sometimes you need a couple layers. Um, another pen that worked really well was one of these metallics. You know these, we still have these, right, years ago? And this turned out great. This that dried really well. Um, let me see. I can't. Let me find it. Okay, uh, right here. So that dried really nicely. Um, what other pens did we use while we were at it? We do use paint pens. We use these kind. Even water-based pens worked really well. So like the Stabilo, um, however, they do um, smear. Um, let me, sh do I have one here? The Tombow ones, these Tombow ones, they work well, but they do smear. Um, but ones that do not smear are your good old Sharpies. So here's some Sharpie. And just Sharpie works really great. So say so you're using your paint pens, you can go round with Sharpie as well. Um, let's see, I should check on questions before I show you some other ideas. Oh, and the other one that worked super, super well was a Copic marker. Do you remember the Copic marker phase of years ago? Oh, where is, oh, this also worked really well. A, um, what's it called? A, um, a Tipex pen, like a corrector pen, which I think is pretty hilarious. Um, and the other one that worked out really well was, um, let me see, was the Copic markers. So do you remember years ago there was the craze for these Copic markers? This, these work excellently on Craftex. And they don't smudge and they're waterproof. So these would be great for doing patterns and things. All right, there are so many questions. I uh, will get to them and then I'll just show you some um, stamping and stencils and I think we'll be good. Let me see if I can answer your questions. And you may well have answered some of the questions yourselves too, which is great. Okay, I'm trying to put the camera back on me. Here we go. Uh, it's good for eco prints, yep. Yeah. Let's see, can you emboss? Oh my gosh. Let's see. Yeah, pit pens are permanent, so pit pens will be good. Admin, please. What does that mean? 
First miserable woman to come forward. I don't understand. A menopause removed. Oh dear. Oh, I'm just trying to see all the comments. Let's see. Does. <sighs> Sorry, folks. I'm just scrolling back up. Choo choo choo. Uh, let's see. I will attempt to put the link up for you a bit later, um, Shahar. I just um, really got one pair of hands. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to look for questions. Um, could you try the watercolor on the wet piece to see how it behaves? Oh, yeah. I will. So here's the wet piece of watercolor. Let's try it. Where did I put my watercolors? Uh, let's see. Okay, let's um, try it. I'm going to just do it while I'm on here. Ooh, that's really nice. Let me see. Let me show you how it looks. Yep, that looks really good. Oh, <laughs> just dropped in my coffee. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, this is it on the wet. So it's spreading beautifully. I can't, um, if I hold up anymore, I'm going to get more um, paint in my coffee. So yeah, the wet on the wet would be really good. So you could soak this. See how it's absorbing all that watercolor? That's really nice. Good question. Um, does the watercolor affect the shape of the craft text? No, nope, not at all. Marie says, Ken Oliver color burst work well great thank you sumi ink says jane i did not try sumi ink uh so that's on you i don't see why i wouldn't do it and i couldn't find any acrylic inks surprise surprise in my closet they must be in my studio so um miriam asked um is she, am i using pre-washed yes i for all of these experiments i use the pre-washed um Phyllis uses retarder with acrylics. Yep, great idea. Ooh, interested in marbling. Ooh, I wonder if you could marble. Uh, gel pens. Oh, there's a spammer. Yeah, I'll just ignore them. They're asking to block Taylor Gang. Huh? A troll. We'll just ignore them. Um, let me see. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey put a link to... um the uh, tutorials on my blog. She's so good. Uh, let's see. Timeless Touches has templates. Excellent. KKK members. Good Lord. My God. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's just, um, we'll block that person. There we go. There we are. She's blocked. Let's block her again. Delete the comment. Okay. Um, Kim says alcohol inks. Yep, I've just blocked her, um, Mickey. Thank you. Something about Joe Biden and who knows. All right, can't wait to try alcohol inks, says Kim. That's a great idea. And so I don't have alcohol inks. So um, if anyone tries them, or anyone wants to jump on and try them right now, please do. So if Mandy Avery is still on here, I would love her to jump in the comments and let us know um, about what she's been doing. She's been doing a lot of pen work on her craft text and I would really appreciate um, her jumping in and letting me know how she was doing that. And I'm gonna grab one more um, set of things to demo for you while I've had a sip of my coffee. Because poor Andy can't make me the coffee and then me not drink it. Yep, that's right, Andy Manning. My coffee's going cold. I'm gonna have to put it in the microwave. All right, um, my last thing, let's see what Mandy has to say. Oh, you're welcome, I'm happy to block her. What a pain, huh? I'm not, you know, honestly, I'm not gonna say anything political because, yeah. I think most people know where we all stand in politics right now. So I think we're mostly on the same page, folks. Um, one thing I did try last night was gelatos um, and, Oh, I may have a cigar box full of gelatos. Who knew? Um, so gelatos are these sort of creamy, um, water-based crayony things. They're pretty fabulous. Um, 
I tried it last night and it was uh, and it wound up being kind of waxy. Um, but this morning it's nice and dry and they work just great. Honestly, I feel like there's very little you can't do to this thing, this craft tech stuff. So gelatos also work really well if you have gelatos. Um, I tried Prismacolor pencils last night. They, they work great. Um, and then I did some stamping and stenciling, which I will also show you. So gel pens mandy says yep yeah, gel pens work fabulously and are permanent so mandy is that what you were doing gel pens on your um thingies um aviva says can you marble let's think about marbling so for marbling you have to pre-treat your paper right um with um aluminum sulfate so I don't see, I mean, I don't see why you couldn't do it. I would do it on the smooth. Well, we'll, we'll just have, one of us is just going to have to try. We're going to have to um, spray this with um, a mordant, let it dry overnight, and then put it in, you know, the bath with the carrageenan. in. As long as it took the mordant, I don't see why you couldn't marble on this. But I would have to try it. Um, so brush a watercolors, ask Carol, I would think pretty much you could use anything on them. So I would think you could use a uh, brush of watercolors for sure. Amandy says she did gel pens over acrylic paint. Nice. Um, so Mar Arlene says they marble leather. So yeah, so I don't see why you couldn't marble it. I just haven't done it. All right, folks, I'm going to finish up by doing a very quick, um, share on how to um, do a little bit of stamping and stenciling, because, you know, why, why wouldn't you want to do that? Um, let's see, let me find, uh, I'll just do it on here too, so that we've used up this piece of paper. So one thing I tried last night was doing some stenciling. Um, I found that I, um, I would, I'm not using these because they, um, if this got wet again, they would smear the distress inks because they're water based. So I decided to um, go with an archival ink that's waterproof. So it takes the stencils really nicely. This is a um, Michelle Ward stencil. She has, she has really nice stencils and stamps at Green Pepper Press. Really love her stuff. Uh, this is ancient, but um, I'm sure she still sells it. So you would just stencil how you would normally stencil. Um, have a, you could get a sponge, you know, a regular sea sponge, or I, I really like these applicators. Just put the stencil on the top and just use a stencil how you would do normally. Um, Kelly Warren, I believe, has um, done spray painting with a can of spray paint and stencils on craft text, I believe. So um, I will say it takes quite a lot of elbow grease to get the ink on the, um, there we go, on the craft text. But when you're done, it looks pretty cute, right? And then, um, so that's that. So just imagine what you can do with all the um, hand cut stencils or pre-bought stencils. The only thing with this is it doesn't come off because it's not water-based. Another thing to try, I'm not going to do that on camera, but would be to rubber stamp an image with stays on. And then this is watercolor. This is liquid watercolors and then color it in, you know, paint it. So it was with stays on. And then finally, finally, one thing that I love to do is to um, use hand carved stamps. So um, someone in our group did, um, so I have all these hand carved stamps. Bless you, Andy. Someone in our group did block printing, which I do not do, but, um, just need my where's my roller but I thought okay well I don't do block printing but I do carve my own stamps from this soft rubber so I thought I could try that and it also worked out really great 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is, so I'm going to use um, this pigment ink again. What I'm trying to say is, you buy yourself some craft text and you just raid your cupboard, or closet, or whatever you have, room, and you can basically use up all your supplies. Actually, I should put this on. Um, I'm going to put this on a, an acrylic block. A little bit of. Um, should put that on before I inked it. Oh well. Just place some pressure here. Whatever you have your stash can pretty much be used on craft tech. So I'm pushing, I'm standing up now and pushing this down really hard. See my lovely wrinkly hands. And then lift this up. Oh yeah, it gives it really nice. So imagine a whole book cover. Imagine your whole book cover covered with hand, um, hand carved stamps in this soft rubber. That would be really cool. Um, here's another, and maybe just do one more because I do really love to do this. Where is it? Uh, yeah, I've made all these little tiny ones. Um, and if you are looking for, I do all these little ones too. If you're looking for a really good um, tutorial on this, a good place to look is, um, gosh, what's her name? What's her name? I can't remember what's her name. She's on Instagram. I'll have to include a link later. I don't remember. Hathaway. Autumn Hathaway is her name. Autumn Hathaway has a really good Instagram and YouTube channel for hand carving rubber stamps. So that would be really fun, I think, just to cover like a whole, um, a whole book cover. So um, DJ asked an interesting question in the Facebook group. What would craft text not be good for? It would not be good for covering a book, so covering book board. You wouldn't, or um, you wouldn't treat it like you would like regular leather. So you wouldn't wrap it around a book board, or you wouldn't um, treat it like book cloth. I think the best thing to use it for is for sort of independent book covers. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've got another troll. Okay. Good Lord. Heavens to Betsy. Do you know what it is? We're just too popular here. Mega mad. These people are just ridiculous. Honest to God. You lost, folks. Sorry. <laughs> it's over. You lost. Okay. Here we go. All right. <sighs> so Laurie says the adhesive. What adhesive am I using for the stamp block? Uh, glue stick. Cheap and cheerful glue stick, Laurie. Just cheap, cheap glue stick. Um, Amy says, what are you using to attach the stamps to the blocks? Yeah, glue stick. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Isabel. Thank you. She report she's reported him twice. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so, yes, yeah, so back to DJ's comment. Uh, what is it good for? I really like it for soft covered books. So if you are a big fan of Keith Smith and you like the exposed stitch, um, exposed, exposed spine books with the decorative stitching, this is ideal. That's really the main thing that I use it for. Um, but the world's your oyster really with, with this, this material and when it comes to making books. Um, it's sort of any, it's anything that you would make from leather. Um, you could use um, pamphlet stitch books with this. Um, why don't you pop in the comments some ideas for things that you would use while I just try and clean up my desk. Um, <sighs> Cl Claudia says, thanks for sharing. Good Lord, another product. Yeah, I know, but this product is gonna allow you to use all those other products. So really, I mean, that's, you know, I would say that's helpful. Um, okay, any other questions? Um, Arlene is using her Uniball. <laughs> um, I can never make my Uniball pens work that well, but I'm glad Uniball works on there. Excellent. Um, any other questions? So Fran's gonna make some stitch journals, excellent. 
Phyllis says, can we do more Keith Smith stitches? We absolutely can. In fact, next week um, on the Facebook Live, we are going, I'll do um, a version of his alpha stitch. So I've, I've kind of mixed it up a little bit because I don't want to completely steal his work. Um, but in next week's Facebook Live, we will make a craft text journal. I haven't done it yet to show you a sample, but I'll, we'll be making a craft text journal um, with a variation on Keith Smith's alpha stitch. So that's going to be a two signature journal next Thursday. Uh, oh, that's funny. Lucy just bought some. Let's see. Oh, hold on. Mandy says, one of the things I did when making the polka dot craft text, but I supported the spine with another piece of craft text. That's a good point, actually, Mandy. This can be a little soft, not soft, but it's not super sturdy. So Mandy, what Mandy is saying is that on the spine here, you see how this sort of dips in a little bit? If you put another piece of craft text inside the spine or even outside of the spine, um you can um it might make it more sturdy and i think that's a really good idea mandy thank you um thank you oh, you like my rationale for buying tony yeah i know right thanks yeah <laughs> and we can justify buying anything you know what these days quite frankly you know amazon must be doing really good um uh good question from kathy have you done a traveler's journal in the past um, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I haven't made all my craft text, but a couple of weeks ago, we made a traveler's journal with an altered book, Kathy. This one right here. Actually, funny story. I um, Because everyone sends me all this lovely mail and, it, and my board got so full, um, in the traveler's journal that we made, I've started to put in all your cards in here. So here's a card from Arlene, who I know is on this call. Um, here's a card in here from Mandy right here. So I've been sticking um, all my cards. Here's one from um, Nancy Ackley. I've been putting all your cards in my traveler's journal in addition to other things. So um, I've never made a traveler's journal from craft text, but it would be fabulous. Um, but we've made one from an altered book. So it's just a couple weeks ago. So you can find that in the Facebook live section. Um, let's see. Janet did her buttonhole stitch. Yeah, lots of people did um, their buttonhole stitch, which is this month's handmade book club book. Um, Patty says, good question. Can you double up? I would, yeah. You can definitely double up on the craft text. And then you could get cut two different colors, right? So a different color inside to outside, which would be really fun. Um, thank you. So Mickey just posted the company that does the craft text here and I will put in a direct link too. Thank you, Mickey. She's so good. Here we go. So in the comments, I just put a link into um, directly to CNT publishing. I should have sent that to Mickey earlier. Thank you, Virginia. Um, I think we're going to finish up because that was a long one. I got like a sore throat from talking, but I have a lot more energy now. Um, Nan made a traveler's journey from craft text and then bound the pages after the trip. It's a great idea. It's a really good idea. Um, I think we're gonna wrap up today, folks. I apologize if you got that random email this morning with a survey that really wasn't meant for you. Um, but hey ho, Lucy says, does one sheet make a sturdy book? Sturdy-ish. I like how it feels, but it depends on your taste, Lucy, for how what sturdy means to you. Do you know what I mean? Like um, if you really wanted it to be a lot more firm, you could double it up. I think a single sheet is just fine. It works great for me, but it's sort of personal preference. But one does work for sure. 